This is Gertid, an alternative to the World Wide Web. With a custom protocol called Gert, with enforced encryption, a new DNS with weird names, a web browser built in a game engine that doesn't rely on Chromium, capable of running a Minecraft clone, that is, complex UIs, all powered by HTML, CSS, and Lua. And we also held a competition with nearly $2,000 in prizes to see if we can build the coolest sites. <coughs> so one year ago, I created my own web called the Boston WebX, and well, you could barely do anything except simple sites. And because it's summer and my brain requires constant simulation to avoid imploding, I decided to rewrite the project thinking it was gonna take one month, and holy, holy fuck, fuck it's wow. September! The web obviously starts with a protocol. My previous project used an HTTP wrapper, which was just boss URLs so resolving to HTTP. That's shit. And this time the protocol is called GERD, and every single connection is encrypted with TLS 1.3 by default. The protocol itself looks familiar if you've ever seen HTTP requests. When you visit a GERD site, your browser first connects via TCP and does a handshake with the protocol version, host, and user agent. The server responds with its own protocol version, and if it matches, it sends a one one code, which means it's switching to TLS encryption. So anything beyond that point is encrypted. Then you can do normal get, post, put, delete, head, options, patch, just, just like, like HTTP that runs on port 80, GERD protocol runs on 4878. Because it spells GERD in that old phone, old people use. The status codes are also identical to HTTP because yes. But how do you secure a connection? After all, let's encrypt those in word because it's not HTTP. Fear not, I built my own certificate authority called GERDCA. To get the certificate, you just run that, create a TXT record in the DNS to verify ownership, press enter, and you get your certificate. Now we need something that can actually see the web. The browser from the last project was made in JTK and it was ass. But this time, we need cross platform support, existing tools, and a robust GUI program. We're using the good old and game and just good old everything. <laughs> you already know sites are made of HTML, the elements, CSS, the styling, and JavaScript the interactivity. Well, the browser for Gertid, called Flumi, does the same but better with Lua instead of JavaScript. HTML. We have a bunch of tags supported, so let's rapid fire through them. If you are forced to learn HTML in your IT classes, you probably know it's separated into two parts head and body. In the head, we have title, which sets the title of the tab, icon, which sets the icon of the tab, font, which loads a custom font with a name, style, where you put your CSS, script, where you put your Lua, and post process, which is a fragment shader that applies to your website viewport with a bunch of presets. For the body, we have text tags like h1, h2, hd, h4, h5, h6, b, i, u, small, mark, code, span, pre, a, br. We also have containers like div, separator, ul, and ol. For input types, we have type text, password, checkbox, radio, color, date, range, number, file, button, select, text area, and lastly, image, audio, and canvas, which is arguably the most impressive thing and we'll get to that eventually. CSS! I've been making sites with Svelte and Tailwind all year and I've gone to inspire normal CSS. So naturally, I made my own version of CSS work like Tailwind, but negatively. Both classes and styles are put in the style attribute, there's no class attribute, and there's support for complex selectors like these. You can set font sizes with XS, SM, Base, LG, XL, 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 and 6XL. What the fuck? Font families with sans, serif, and mono. You can also make it bold, italic, underline, align, center, right, left, justify, change color, use predefined palettes, yes, I ported every single tailwind color, and you can also set background color, width, height, padding, margin, but what about layout? Well, I'm not insane enough to write a full layout engine from scratch, but thankfully Meta has open sourced this project called Yoga Layout, a portable engine that targets web standards. Somebody made Godot bindings for it, and just like that, wow. you have browser gate flexible support. We also support border width, color, side, and radius, opacity, Z index, state styles for hovering and active, and cursor. What the fuck? You weren't supposed to throw me that eye, you fucking Fortnite belt bus driver. You see, a few days ago, my friend asked me, Hey, daddy face, how do I learn to do what you do if I'm a lazy fuck that never goes outside? And I said, Boot.dev, one of the greatest platforms for learning code. I've always been a sucker for following tutorials to build insane shit. Hell, even one of my most popular videos is me following a tutorial and adding my own touch. In the fantasy world of Boot.dev, today's sponsor, you can literally earn XP, level up, complete quests, and fight bosses just like in video game or learning backend development in Python and Go and Shukwil. It walks you through the basics of programming. And real projects, which I love because, because my, my take, take has always been that you need a visual reward when learning programming. No one's gonna get really passionate by writing C to make a linked list implementation. And just like any good RPG, they added a training ground. It's like the battle arena where you can grind infinite coding challenges to level up your skills before taking on the main quest. All of the content is free to read, but if you want the fully immersive wizard experience with interactive coding, progress tracking, use my code FaceDev at boot.dev for 20% off your first year. He loved me stuff. Yo, what the fuck? Thanks to Buddha Dev for sponsoring this video. Interactivity! The web runs on JavaScript. What the 
who the fuck cares about it when watching the embedding and whopping 350 kilobytes? Gertit comes with a full Hulu API that lets you add interactivity, logic, animations, and network calls to your websites. The global Gert object, the key of all DOM manipulation, page navigation, querying elements, and appending new content. You can also show, hide, focus, and unfocus elements. You can interact with classes via element class list. You can attach listeners to the body for global keyboard or mouse events. Animations are handled with twins, which stands for in between and is an animation technique where keyframes are interpolated programmatically from point A to point B. Gertit also gives you domain specific client side storage called prompts like browser cookies. The audio API lets you play, pause, stop, loop, seek, and adjust volume. You can initialize the download process with Gertit Download, which looks very pretty in the browser. Canvas is fully supported for 2D drawing and shaders. The 2D context supports rectangles, circles, text, paths, arcs, curves, and all typical transformations like translate, scale, rotate. The shader context lets you write fragment shaders for your canvas. Networking is done via fetch for GERT and HTTP requests and WebSocket for real-time communication. DNS DNS stands for Domain Name System. It turns stuff like YouTube.com to an IP that can serve the content. GERT DNS runs on the GERT protocol and encrypts everything similar to DNS over HTTP and your internet provider can't even see the sites you visit. You can register domains for free on GERTDNS.web. You just gotta sign up and you get 3 free domains. Why 3 free domains? It's just that if we don't have a limit, people would be spamming our submissions. And if you want, you can create an alt account and you get more submissions or tell people to share theirs with yours. After your domain is approved, you can set up the records. You can make an A record, which directly points to your server IP, an A, -A, -A, -A record, which is the same thing but for IPv6. Fun fact, we have IPv6 because we ran out of IPv4 and IPv6 is ugly as shit, so fuck it. You also have C name records, which basically act as an alias. It points to another domain name. NTXT, which is designed for verifications. But how do you search files if you can't use NGINX or any HTTP server? Well, you got Gertie in which you can customize timeouts, logging, security, error pages, and headers. Run it your HTML files and congrats, you have your own GERD site. You also get GERDlib for Rust, which is a server and client implementation for the GERD protocol and is used internally in the browser. And yes, all backend stuff is written in Rust because it's <laughs> The browser is a huge step up from the last one. You have multi-tab support, Lua runs on a separate thread from the UI, you have dev tools for console and in-dev network information. You can change a few settings like disabling the network confirmation, check your downloads and browsing history, and since it's made in Godot, I easily added the post-process tag which applies a fragment shader to your entire website viewport with about 10 built-in effects like CRT, grain, big net, pencil, snowfall, chromatic aberration which for the longest time I thought was called chromatic abbreviation, radial blur, lens flare, foliage, and dithering. Search engine. The search engine was built pretty quickly, it goes through all of the sites registered in DNS, fetches their HTML, extracts text, indexes it, and then makes it all searchable through a GERD protocol endpoint the frontend can call. So I forgot to mention that instead of robots.txt we have a standard car clanker.txt. All of this is similar to how Winter worked from my search engine video. Website! Obviously we need a website for the real web so people can download the browser and tools. So I made one in about 3 hours at curti.com. Generational domain! The entire project was named because I copied that domain. It features the sub project, some code examples, and the link to the documentation which goes in detail on every single feature and its page is long and on the download page you can actually download about this time I use something called Inno setup which is an installation builder for Windows and if I just show it you can probably tell you downloaded a few apps using it but I don't make the installer before compressing everything with UPX which got us a whopping 29 megabyte browser you know me I know me and obviously I didn't have any support in the first days of the hackathon because my mic got cut off. I would have added Mac OS support, but I don't have a Mac test, so that brings us to the hackathon! After two months, everything was finished, so I launched a competition to see if anyone would actually build something interesting on this web. The competition had $1,800 in prices, sponsored by my friend Macaboo, everyone had 72 hours, and holy fuck, they delivered. Let's get to the results. Featuring Fake Steph, coding with Lewis, and a Macaboo, with the first side being fucked up, yeah! Yeah, this one is just one big page of uh, world text. Interesting. It's like a man. A festo like a murderer <laughs> you know one out of ten they put it all in one p box i'd give it like a one out of ten yeah i'm also gonna go with one google uh oh wow okay oh oh my that last person who made that manifesto made this website <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i got a hundred bucks i'm running a blackjack i got 21. do i win oh yeah i win okay let me try dice this is one of the most like pick a number between one and six. You guess, and then it just rolls a dice. They have live news on here. Breaking new slot machine, Lucky Seven Seven Seven, now available. Oh my God! There's actual breaking news. Yeah, okay, we're probably not gonna include that tab. I have no idea how roulette works. The wheel is spinning. It's still spinning. Yeah, there seems to be an error with transitions. That's a seven out of ten for me. I, I was gonna give it an eight out of ten, but it says sixty-seven, so I'm gonna give it a six point seven out of ten. You don't fit. 
Rubik's, Rubik's Cube Simulator. Simulator. Yeah, it definitely has that flickery kind of effect to it, like as if it's like re-rendered. But you know what? It kind of reminds me. They should have like put like a, a CRT effect over it, and then it would kind of like make sense. But oh, I'm not. I am not solving that ever. Oh, are you supposed, supposed to solve it? Oh, it, oh wait. Oh, the up arrow for me rotates the cube. <gasps> oh. Honestly, this is one of my favorites. I, I don't know Rubik's Cube. Probably going to give it a nine. I'm giving it a nine on like a unique idea. I'm going to be more critical and probably give this seven. Fluffy balls. Fun fact about that bird. I actually suck at it. And this one seems to mimic it way too much because uh, I suck at this one too. High score doesn't Three. seem too obvious for me. Well, my high score is five, so I'll give it a five out of ten. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also gonna go with six. I have to give it a two or a three. You know, it's a fun game, it's Flappy Bird, but like there's nothing more to it. Open canvas.io! Oh, cool. You just log it, hit the log it. Oh, it looks like, like a little Windows, like. You know what this is? It's a hundred percent like the um, the Reddit. R the space. Yeah. Everyone had like a pixel they could put, and you only get one every sixty seconds. Oh, I do see someone drawing. I see a bunch of pixels appearing at the bottom. I think that's a yeah, side okay. owner because uh, there's no limit to that one. Okay, the buttons at the top don't seem to do anything, so I guess um, that's the side. I I don't necessarily know if it is working or not. The things that I put earlier just weren't there, but I mean, I think, you know, it's a hackathon, right? So I, I, I'll say seven and a half out of 10. I like the design. I think I'm going to give it a nine. I actually really like the design. I, I also like that. I was going to give it an eight. Bite shit the face. Oh, it, it's a bit flickery. That's pretty impressive. Except there's no collision, but I mean. Oh, you can rotate the camera with the arrow rotation thing, and then there's like a like in place down. I give this like a nine out of 10, honestly. Yeah, I'm also going to give it a 9.5. 7.5 for me. You know, it's just wish there was a little bit more. Put the pillow. Oh, there's pose. You can see people posting stuff. Post created. Well, the relative time stamps seem to be a bit off, but other than that, it's what? Twitter. I think I'm gonna give it uh, I give it a, an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, I noticed when you go down to the bottom, but it clips out. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I see. Seven now. You guys give the Minecraft one an eight, and then you give this an eight as well. Here's my vibe. My vibe is that I give it five and a half because it works, it's consistent, but it's it's a bit glitchy. Oh, it's the seven instead of eight. <laughs> Girted games. Tetris Breakout and Dino. Oh, there's music. Okay, I am bad at this game. I can't miss a single line. Okay, dude, screw Tetris. I... Oh, it's that game. I'm gonna wait five business days for the ball to arrive. Yeah, it's just a dinosaur game from Chrome. But there's no dino. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a square. <laughs> I'm still on Tetris. <laughs> I bet 5,000. I'm just having a blast over here. I'm gonna give it, honestly, a 9 out of 10. I give it a 9. I give it a 9 as well. Oh my god, it's pulling every single image. No. Oh my god. They're not even like using the... JPEG, which is weird. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a PNG. I see. I look at these comments. Oh no. I think it's kind of impressive they got video working considering there's no video tag. If you're not able to get video and they just found a way to get video on there, that's pretty impressive. But I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of ten. That's I was my gonna give it a five out of ten. Good shit. Press any key to start. Oh, I'm seeing your name in the in the words. I think they uh, they've done some rigging. I got 89 words per minute. Yeah, I got 83. I did find that the letter there was a couple letters where like I am for sure hitting the right button. It's a bit buggy. Oh, well, it's a pretty interesting concept. I could see this just being my old monkey type looks like. I'll probably give it an eight and a half out of ten. I was gonna give it an eight. Eight point five. Yeah, a little gradient. Oh, that was oh, really bad. I Generate like good sites from ideas. Generate like a yo, that's cool. The URL got updated and it says prompt is required and must have at least 10 characters long. Why are you debugging in the uh, URL bar? Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. I got a website. Oh, okay. Mine looks like 4 channels. It's like a V0. Okay, so, wait, it's like lovable. Okay, I like this one. It's pretty creative. Honestly, it's gonna be a 10 for me. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I think I'm on that same boat. Like, it was pretty impressive. I thought visually it looked beautiful. I'm gonna give it a, a ten. Do we agree on uh, Open Canvas being the best one for design? Yeah. For performance. Um, what about my shit? Oh, you're right. That it one actually lot, has a lot really of good. And stuff, so. The Minecraft one might be the yeah, one. I think Minecraft yeah. is the most innovative. Cube.fent. What about that one? Oh, that was cool. That oh yeah, that's cool. most innovative. There you go. I haven't seen a Rubik's Cube simulator on the real internet that looks yes. that nice. So. And that concluded the hackathon. Everybody got their prize. Congratulations to all of the winners. This is not going to replace the World Wide Web. It's body.
it's weird. But it feels like our own little corner of the internet, which is pretty cool. If you wanna see me make a second video on this, cause we have a ton more cool shit that could be done, let me know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter and switch to Windows! Boo! Big thanks to all of the Patreons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.